After the deaths of the joint emperors Gordian I and Gordian II in 238, the Roman Senate proclaimed two elderly senators, Papianus and Balbinus, joint emperors. However, the people and the Praetorian Guard in Rome distrusted the Senate's nominees and insisted on making the 13-year-old Marcus Antonius Gordianus, or Gordian III, who was the grandson of Gordian I and nephew of Gordian II, Caesar, and designated heir to the throne. Rise to Power Herodian, whose account has been a primary source for many of our recent videos, stops with the accession of the teenage Gordian. The Historia Augusta is good in some parts, but fictional much of the time. That being said, we don't even know the names of Gordian III's mother or father. The names we have stems from the Historia Augusta and have largely been dismissed by modern historians as untrue. But we do know that his mother was the sister of Gordian II, which means that the elderly Gordian I was the young emperor's grandfather. He was born on the 20th of January, 225. In 235, following the murder of Emperor Severus Alexander, Maximinus Thrax was proclaimed emperor. He proved to be a very unpopular ruler, due in large part to his low birth and his tyrannical ways. And with the empire facing a financial crisis, Maximinus raised the taxes, which proved to be extremely unpopular. So much so, that when the procurator of Africa collected the taxes, some young men of the wealthiest and most aristocratic local families attacked and killed him. Fearing for their safety, they forced Gordian I to accept the purple to shield them from the inevitable retribution from Maximinus. However, the only legion stationed in North Africa belonged to Capellianus, the governor of the neighbouring province of Numidia, who was loyal to Maximinus and seems to have had a grudge against the Gordians. Capellianus marched his forces and crushed Gordian II, and Gordian I committed suicide when he learned of his son's fate. The Senate in Rome had supported the Gordians and their rebellion against Maximinus Thrax, who they had declared an enemy of the state. And with the Gordians dead, they scrambled to find a suitable imperial candidate to oppose Maximinus, who was marching towards Rome, hellbent on vengeance on the Senate. They elevated two senators to the imperial throne, Pupianus and Balbinus. When the new emperors were sworn in on the Capitoline Hill, Herodian describes what happened. While these actions were being taken on the Capitoline Hill, the people, whether they were informed by Gordian's friends and fellow countrymen, or whether they learned it by rumour, filled the entire street leading up to the Capitol. The huge mob was armed with stones and clubs, for they objected to the Senate's action and particularly disapproved of Pupianus. Balbinus and Pupianus surrounded themselves with an escort of swordsmen from the young equestrians and the discharged soldiers living in Rome, and tried to force their way from the capital. The mob, armed with stones and clubs, prevented this until, at someone's suggestion, the people were deceived. There was in Rome at this time a little child, the son of Gordian's daughter, who bore his grandfather's name. The two emperors ordered some of their men to bring the child to the capital. Finding the lad playing at home, they lifted him to their shoulders and brought him to the capital through the midst of the crowd, showing the boy to the people and telling them that he was the son of Gordian. They called him Gordian, while the mob cheered the boy and scattered leaves in his path. The boy was only ten years old at the time, clearly too young to rule the empire, so the senate appointed him Caesar, marking him out as the successor of the two senatorial emperors, who were in their 60s and 70s respectively. With the mob placated, the new emperors were allowed to proceed to the palace. In May 238, Maximinus Thrax was betrayed by demoralised soldiers of the Legio II Parthica during the siege of Aquileia. They mutinied and murdered him together with his son. The Praetorians were privately disgruntled by the two senatorial emperors, and after only 99 days on the throne, they were cut down by the guardsmen in July or August of 238. The Youngest Emperor 
Gordian III was only 13 years old when he was elevated to the imperial throne, hardly of age to rule by himself, but our frustrating lack of sources doesn't give us many hints of who actually governed the empire, but it's likely some sort of regency was in place during his earliest years. Three years after his ascension in 241, Timocytheus emerges as the leading figure in Gordian's court. He was appointed Praetorian Prefect and, to all practical intents and purposes, directed policy and military matters. Timocytheus' daughter, Furia Sabinia Tranquillina, also married the young Gordian at this time. Perhaps as early as 239 or as late as 241, the Sassanids attacked Dura Europos and overran the greater part of Roman Mesopotamia. Timocytheus prepared well for the Eastern Campaign using his long military and administrative experience, especially in logistics and supplies. However, before a counter-offensive against the Persians could be launched, Gordian and Timocytheus were forced to attend to the Goths and Germans in Illyricum. The tribesmen were restless after Timocytheus had disgraced and removed Menophilus, a man sent to the region by Balbinus and Pupienus to restore order in the region. He was removed in 241 for reasons that are not fully clarified. Timocytheus conducted a short war in 242, probably recruiting tribesmen for the Eastern Front as he concluded peace. Gordian arrived in the East probably in the last months of 242, and the campaign against Persia was launched in the spring of the following year. After a battle at Resena, the Persians were forced to retreat, but during the high point of the war, Timetheus died. With the death of the Praetorian Prefect, Marcus Julius Verus Philippus, now commonly referred to as Philip the Arab, assumed the prefecture of the guard. Philip and Gordian followed the original plan and marched towards Stesiphon. The following events are clouded in obscurity, but we do know that Gordian died sometime in the spring of 244 and that Philip the Arab assumed the position of emperor. The traditional view is that Philip was behind a plot to kill the young Gordian, but other sources suggest that he was wounded in battle and never recovered. We'll probably never know for sure what happened, but Philip the Arab was proclaimed emperor by the soldiers and he treated the dead emperor with the greatest respect insisting upon his deification. Final Thoughts Gordian III ruled the empire for barely six years, and it's exceedingly hard to judge his merit as an emperor with the poor state of our sources. But the appointment of Timetius, who acted as a sort of regent for the young emperor, seems to have been successful, as he was able to deal with numerous crises during Gordian's reign. Gordian was only 19 years old when he died. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we make here on the channel. It really helps us grow and reach more people. The next video will be on Philip the Arab, who may have been Rome's first Christian emperor.